Welcome back to our next step. We're going to set up some compression. But before we get to that, let's recap a little bit. We imported the audio. We added a master fader. We opened a phase scope so we have some metering. That's over here in the right bottom right hand corner. We next inserted ourselves a gain stage, brought our volume down about six decibels to give ourselves some headroom. Next thing up, we went through the basics, uh, broad strokes on an EQ. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move to compression. So remember, folks, these plugins are all native to Pro Tools. None of the stuff was added or bought extra. So you should be able to find the trim control, your EQ, and the compressors we're going to use in your native plugin dropdowns. Okay, let's go ahead and move to compression. I'm going to insert a basic Pro Tools compressor. It's Dynamics 3, compressor limiter. And we'll go ahead and click the red button. If you click the red buttons, the plugins stay instead of hiding and stacking on top of each other. So I always try to make sure I do that. Okay, the first step with setting up our compressor is going through each of the controls. We have knee, ratio, attack, release, gain, and threshold. Gain will be the last one. But let's start with knee. Knee changes the curve of the compressor. At zero, it's a hard knee compressor. Let's slide this back to 12. 12 is where soft knee compression starts to kick in tends to have a smoother effect on stereo tracks. Next up, let's do our ratio control. The default is 3 to 1. Let's go ahead and change that to 2 to 1. Drop that a little bit. Attack time should be about 60 milliseconds for most music. Could be faster or slower. We'll cover that in later tutorials when we get a lot deeper into the compressor. But for our basic chain, 60 should be a good place to start. And release time should be somewhere between 250 and 350 milliseconds. That's an average release time range. We're going to go ahead and throw ours in at about 350. We'll go right in the middle. Okay. The threshold we're going to adjust as we're playing audio back. So let's go ahead and put that to zero. And we know our average based on our LEQ reading where that threshold is approximately going to be. So we'll take a look at that number as we play back. And then I'm going to move the compressor. So let's go ahead and hit some playback on a loud section of the song. Probably the loudest if possible. So I'm going to grab this outro section. We've got a lot of stuff going on back here. So let's do that. As we're listening, I'm going to pull the threshold control down. You'll notice as this number starts to match the LEQ number on our meter, we should start to see some compression. And we're looking for about two decibels worth of attenuation over here on our gain reduction meter. All right, so let's play back, and here we go. You can get shot by John. Okay, so we're seeing about 2 dB, maybe slightly more in compression. We pretty much want to stop there. Anything past 2, we are gonna might start to get into some sonic trouble by over compression. So we'll keep it at about 2. So you can hear now the music has a lot more energy, a lot more punch. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking to make it incredibly loud, just looking to add a little bit of attitude. Translate with a lot of energy. All right, well that wraps up compression. So you guys make sure you come back and check out limiting, which will be our next step.